What a pain in the ass. You see why I didn't want to do this? <laughs> okay, so you'll see behind me is a Kit Fox Model 7. One of the selling points of the Kit Fox aircraft is that the wings fold. And you might be thinking, hey, I'd like to buy a Kit Fox so I can fold the wing. Well, I'm going to take you through the process of what it actually takes to fold a wing. And according to Kit Fox, it takes 10 minutes. Um, you hear this in their marketing, it'll take 10, 10 minutes uh, or 15 minutes, whatever it is. They say it's a pretty quick process. Um, I've only done it pretty much to transport it a while ago. I haven't done it since. And we're actually going to go through and time it and see how long it takes us to fold this wing from beginning to end. And this little guy is going to play a really important role into speeding up that process. So without further ado, here we go. OK, so folding a wing for, on a Kit Fox is not, I would say it's not a complete walk in the park. So let's just talk about what exactly you need to do to fold a wing. First things first, you can't have all, all the fuel. If, for those of you who don't fly, fuel in an airplane is stored in the wings usually, typically speaking. So you can't have extra fuel in the wing because it adds weight on that rear spar when you fold it and puts stress in places that shouldn't have that much stress, uh, at least by themselves. So in order to fold a wing, the first thing you have to do is drain the fuel out. I have drained the fuels out of the tanks before. It's a huge pain. With the equipment that Kit Fox provides, um, the drain valve is not very drain friendly. So you have to like manually hold it down there and it just makes a mess. It spills all over the place. So I'm actually going to replace my quick drain valve with this. And I will start the timer after I get this in because I'd say if you were going to regularly fold your wings, you'd have to have some form of quick drain or locking drain valve um, to do this in any reasonably fast manner. So we'll drain the fuel out of the wings. First, I'll replace this. Then I'll start a timer. We'll drain the fuel out of the wings. Then I have to take these covers off, <coughs> pull the p uh, pins out for the wings, detach the flapper on hinge joints, and then I got to go get the cover for the tail, and then it'll fold all the way back, and we should be good to go. So that's the general process. We won't start the timer yet. First things first, I'm going to replace this part here. OK, so this is going to be a mess. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually clamp off. I don't want to drain the entirety of the wing because it's going to take a long time. So what I'm going to do is clamp off the fuel lines from the wing to the header tank. And then I'll take the actual valve out, drain the header tank, and then I'll be able to replace this. Then I'll unclamp these, and then I can drain the wings all at once. I'm going to need one more of those. Okay, then I gotta get down here. This is gonna be a mess. This is gonna spit, start spitting fuel out in large quantities. This is the quick, or the valve for draining the fuel that Kit Fox provides. It's just like a push valve. So in order to actually drain this thing, you have to hold that depressed for the entirety of the tanks, or you do what I did, which is just pull the plug on the valve, and then it just pours out like that. I'm using these five gallon gas tanks because historically I've tried to drain them right into a, an actual fuel tank, but it makes a mess because it sprays everywhere. It's kind of hard to direct that stream sometimes. So these gas, these uh, just normal five gallon cans are uh, much easier to, to work with. This clamp isn't cutting the fuel off. That's something that I didn't cl quite clamp that fuel line off all the way, so it was still draining. Um, and now it's kind of making a mess, so I'm gonna see if I can get this thing in here quickly. Nope. Okay, I'm gonna have to buy a different one of these because this isn't gonna work. Oh, what a mess. So that's not gonna work. This is actually a big problem. There's no way to get a quick drain in there. So I'm just gonna have to train it the good old fashioned way, which is like this. Means I have to get these buckets out. I'm gonna undo this clamp. Okay, we're gonna start the timer. Now there's there's nothing we can do about it at this point. What comes, comes. So I'm gonna put a timer on here and see actually how long it takes to drain the tanks. Starting the timer. There we go, so I'll put that in my pocket. So we just spilled fuel everywhere basically. Okay, this was something I was actually concerned about. Because of the way that that valve is on the header tank, it's sort of inset in a little aluminum cup, and it's not very wide. It's almost the same diameter as this quick, particular quick drain lock. I wanted to try this one to see if it would work. There's no way of really trying it without buying it, so this particular model won't work. There are some other options out there that are a little narrower that I could actually get a, uh, like a half-inch wrench on, so I'll have to go back to Aircraft Spruce and buy a different one for now. Um, I started the timer. We're just draining it the old-fashioned way, which is pulling the plug on the... Um, Basically just pulling the plug on the header tank and letting it letting it rip. That's the best way to do it. If I didn't have, like this, I don't like this. 
It's not that big of a deal because you're just wrenching out a plug, but once it goes, you can't really stop it. Um, you can't reliably plug the lines enough. There's always going to be a little bit of drip. And um, you know, once, the, once the gas starts flowing, you better have enough um, five gallon buckets or gas cans ready because your whole tanks are going to drain at that point. So I can slow this down a little bit, which is what I'm going to do just to give myself some more time to deal with the excess. Because of gas prices, we have to make sure we don't spill a single drop because it's probably worth, you know, every drop of gasoline is worth like, what is it? Probably 50 cents at this point because gas is so expensive. This is super premium stuff too, so it's over $5 a gallon at this point. All right, what we'll do is fold this thing over and then dump, dump some of that stuff back inside. There's freaking gas all over the ground. I've never been able to do this without spilling gas everywhere. We're running out of steam, this is good. So I'll just transfer over to this bucket. What a pain in the ass. You see why I didn't want to do this? <laughs> trying to act quickly because that other bucket's gonna fill up any second now. This is gonna be practically impossible. I think we're gonna be okay on that. I'm just, I'm not panicked about overflowing at this point. Is it dripping all over the place? Yep, it is. Oh crap, where's the other one? Okay, the only way you can prevent it from like dripping like crazy is to put this thing back in quickly. It's literally just like running fuel down when you get to the bottom. Ah, <sighs> oh, what a pain, right? What a pain. Okay, I'm just gonna leave that in there for right now. So I just put the plug in the uh, actual header tank. So when it gets down to the bottom on that method, there's not enough pressure to make a nice stream. So it just sort of runs on the belly of the airplane and then you end up with fuel all over the place. This is why I need a quick, quick drain valve of some form, um, but the one I bought just isn't gonna cut it. So I have to try a different one. But this dump method is really just kind of a mess. And now I don't want fuel sitting around in open containers. So I'm gonna have to deal with this and put it back in the tank in the back of my truck. So we'll just dump that really quickly which, let's see, is gonna take a funnel. I mean, in theory, you could put this in gas cans directly, but you saw how it came out of there. I don't know how you get it in a gas can. The other option is to fly it down until it's pretty much empty but that takes a lot of planning. <sighs> Let's try not to make as much of a mess this time. Okay, that should be tight enough. So fuel tanks are drained. Let's do a time check. So the timer's been running. It's taken us 17 minutes up to this point to drain the tanks. I feel like it would have been a lot faster and a lot smoother if I had quick drain. Um, so, you know, take that with a grain of salt, but as it is provided in a kit with the current valve, um, the, there are two other options to drain the tank. Now you could sit down there with a cup and depress that valve and have it drain. It makes a mess, I've done it before and it takes forever. It took me like an hour and a half to drain the tanks. The other option to drain the tanks, are there are two of them, but you just have to do it for each wing. There are these ports on the wing that you can drain. Some, some of you might ask, why would you not put quick drains on this port? Because um, I could pull this off and do the, like, the valve, locking valve on this. 
Well, the problem with that is that when you have bubble doors, it gets awfully close to that valve, especially under wind. And so you're already pretty close to touching um, this valve. And if you put any extension on there, it would crack your windshield every time you open the door. So I didn't really feel comfortable putting any extensions on there. Um, I feel like Kitbox could solve that problem. These doors get pretty rattly in flight. If they put another gas strut on the back side, um, I know it would add weight and complexity, but um, definitely that's one of my complaints about opening the doors is it wobbles, and that's why I don't drain from the wings. Also, you're in the same boat. If you drain from the wings, you've got to sit here and hold this for however long it takes to drain, and it just spills fuel everywhere. You have to like hold a tank, so I just kind of skip the wings. Also, I'm pretty sure if you get gas on the polycarb, it'll crack it from what I understand, but I don't want to test that theory. It's just a, uh, something I've read. Definitely not testing it. Anyway, that's it for draining the tanks. The tanks are drained. You can look at the ga gauges and they're pretty much empty. So I'll have to go through the next steps, which is pulling off the wing root covers and also undoing the uh, flaperon hinges so that the flaperons can fold. So we'll do that next. What a pain. Hey, Roger, let's film a video about how to drain your fuel tanks or how to fold your wings. Remember what I told you? I told you that this wasn't gonna be fun. Wow, is that just like stripped? Shouldn't wear pants, it's kinda hard to move around. There's one. I need to do this anyway because there's a fuel, slight fuel drip in this right wing somewhere on one of these fittings and I need to open this up and figure out where it is. Okay, there's the top one, the bottom one done. Okay, so we're almost there. Next up, I gotta put this tail cover on and then these are my favorite tools for getting the actual um, pins out of the wing. Um, and then we also have to undo the flapper on hinges. So we'll get those few things out of the way and then we'll be done and we can stop the timer. Uh, this is a roll pin punch. So it's just a flat headed punch for punching pins out. This is a flathead or a Phillips, which I sometimes use as a punch. And this is just a mallet for getting the pin out. That's pretty, pretty straightforward equipment. Uh, let's see here. Didn't make it in my top 10. The Phillips would have made it, but. So inside here, these flapper on hinges need to be detached. And there's a safety pin on them, which comes out. And then a winged nut. Oh, crap. I totally forgot. We have to take the turtle deck off. Well, that's gonna suck. Which is not only not fun to take off, but it's also not fun to put back on. Okay, now that these flapperons are undone, we can go for the turtle deck, which I need this for. So there's a whole bunch of screws in here. I actually bought these. These don't come with the kit I, as far as I can remember. Um, these are winged um, cam lock studs and uh, they just make it easier to pull this, this turtle deck off. All right, I'm gonna have to find a home for this thing. I guess I'll go put it on my workbench, but I'm gonna need to put down like a packing pad or something. Okay, here we go. You'll see. In theory, this thing does fold in half, and I could put it on the seat, but uh, I'm gonna go put it down over here. Okay, time check. We're coming along at 30 minutes, so not too bad, uh, but a few more things here and we'll be done. Okay, there's this little pin in here. What tool do you think I'm gonna go grab? Needle nose. Oh, the needle nose. Was that my number one? What was my number one? Needle nose. I mean, I'm always using needle nose. There's pretty much no way to get by life without a pair of needle nose if you own a kit box. And there's one safety pin. Don't wanna lose these, so I'll just put them in a safe place. 
right, before we fold this, I'm gonna have to move it so that we can fold both the wings. So we're gonna have to actually drag it out of here. I don't know, I mean, if you had a spare garage, you could do this. And, and one thing I've thought about is if I was storing it for a long time, um, you could store it in like the back of somebody's hanger, but you'll see how, we're gonna do some measurements on how big this is when it's actually folded, because that's a question I get a lot. It's like, what's the, what are the dimensions when the wings are folded? But if you were trying to share hanger space for like long-term storage and stuff like that, then this is definitely doable, because like if you're gonna leave it there for like a month, then an extra hour or whatever it takes to fold it is definitely worth it instead of paying for the extra storage. Uh, let's see, let's, I gotta move it. We're gonna have to pull it out and roll it back. Okay, there's a bunch of tricks for doing this. Just depends on uh, how many people you have available. One person could definitely fold these wings. Um, I see them in, in the videos using a, like a ratchet strap, so we're gonna try that technique, but I'll have some assistance here if things don't go well. Okay, so what guys do is they hook up to this outside and that makes sure that the thing doesn't fall when they let go. So I'm just gonna sort of tuck that in my belt. So I'm sure every kit box is different, but my pins on one side are easier to get out than the other. So we'll start with this left wing. This is actually the one I need to fold. Let's just get it started. Okay, let's just double check and make sure that before we fold this, everything's good. So that's detached, turtle deck is off, wings are drained. So we just have to make sure that it doesn't drop and then pull the flapper on up when it does go over. So here we go. So the really, the really big risk is that you don't have a good grasp on the wing uh, and it drops when you pull this pin out because you're basically the only thing. I actually prefer to just hold here when I pull the pin out but this is, I might not even use this. This is my way of doing it. If you don't have streamlined struts, you can't really grab here or else you'll pull the PVC off. So I guess that's why people bring a ratchet strap. But for me, this metal holding technique works just fine. Let's get a pair of needle nose on here. Yep. Okay, this pin's actually pretty easy to pull. So I've got the weight of the wing at this point. And this is kind of a ballet. So as this folds, which first we have to make sure everything clears, yep. We have to make sure that this flapper on gets folded at the right time. So it can't fold too early. Now it can fold all the way. And then the wing comes all the way back. Ooh, it's gonna hit the antenna. Woo! It's just, it just fell on the fuel slick. Okay, um, we'll do it on the other side. I'll show you some goofy thing about this. That's one wing folded. Cool. Everything looks, everything looks good. Um, we should be, should be all set on that one. So now it's time to do the other side. Second wing is exactly the same as the first wing, pretty much. So we just double check. Flapper on's detached. The pin is ready to go and the tank is drained, so we should be good. <clears throat> it's hard to get in here because of this bubble door. Okay. So in theory, this should pull out. Okay, there we go. So, everything's clear. Looks like we're gonna make it back there. I'll hold the weight of the wing. Pull this pin. Put the pin in the seat. Then of course, we have to fold this up, but not too early. Oh, that's okay. Forty minutes, almost exactly. Now. Did I do a lot of diddling around? Yes. Could it be done faster? Absolutely. I think that having a more efficient way of draining the tanks, which I'm still working on, would have saved uh, pretty substantial effort, as well as having a better system. Like if I was gonna do this regularly, I'd have some form of fuel tank or something that I didn't have to drain and uh, transport into, uh, cause that kind of makes a mess and uh, takes a lot of time. The other option is obviously, a lot of people might think, well, why don't you just run the thing down to empty before you put it away, 
well, I mean, when you go flying, you don't know exactly how much fuel you're gonna burn. Uh, and usually speaking, you like to have a little bit of reserve when you're flying, so I don't like to run my tanks down all the way, all the way to empty. It kind of is, you know, just in aviation, it's good to have like an hour of reserve, which is, you know, the header tank plus some pretty substantial fuel in the tanks. Um, anyway, the effort involved, uh, would I want to do this every time I flew? Absolutely not. I don't really, I kind of dreaded having to do this, but I got a lot of people asking, and uh, I actually do need to get in that right wing to do some work on it. But, you know, it's, imagine taking the wing off of another plane, it wouldn't be possible. So Kit Fox does afford you this option to actually fold the wing, uh, but I will say it's not sort of a lax 10 minute job. Unless the fuel is already drained, then um, you know, you're looking at a little bit more effort to fold the wings. Now, because I have to do some work on this right wing, I am not going to go through the effort of putting the wings back together. We're gonna do that uh, later. So we'll come back to that and uh, show what it looks like to actually fold the wings and time that exercise also. But for now, you know, 40 minutes to fold the wings and now we have a really, really tiny kit box that we can put anywhere in the hangar. So next step is we're gonna actually throw some measurements. I'm gonna throw some measuring tape up and see what the dimensions are with this thing with the wing folded. So I'm gonna measure the full distance from the leading edge of one wing to the leading edge of the other wing. It's actually probably easier to do this in the back because there's not as much in the way. Oops, crap. Okay, you got it? Yep. We're looking at 100 and 110 or 111 inches wide. So 111 inches that way. Uh, let's see about height with the tires. Obviously that's your tallest point, but you know, that's easy to deal with. Then we have to measure from here to the crest. So the height with the tires pretty much fully inflated is 76 inches plus or minus. Now you can get that down a little lower if you deflated the tires or had smaller tires on it. That's obviously an option. And the last question would be length. Okay, length with wings folded is about 257, 257 inches. Yeah, let's say that, 257. And then what about the contact patch for the wheels? So wheel to wheel distance, we're looking at 90, about 92 inches. So the distance from the outside of one wheel to the outside of the other wheel is 92 inches. So if you were to roll this onto a trailer, the trailer has to be at least 92 inches wide. And this is a problem I had before. A lot of trailers have wheel wells in them. So they're 92 inches wide or 94 inches wide, but they have a wheel well. So there's a section where they're only about 70 something inches wide. So that's kind of a problem if you have to get over the wheel wells. Not a huge problem if, I mean, I'm not gonna get into the whole details about trailering, but um, those are just like basic dimensions, which I know a lot of people ask about. That's that. Okay, let's see if we can move this thing around with the tail dragger dragger. No, you cannot. <laughs> I mean, barely. This is actually a really serious consideration. Once you w fold the wings, it's actually kind of hard to move this thing around. Um, usually, like the way you normally grab it is up there. And this, I guess, kind of articulates. So I'll give it a shot, see if I can get it closer to the wall. It's, it's not that bad. With this thing, it's not that bad. Without this thing, it's a pain in the butt. Ooh, that's slippery. It's more difficult to move it with the wings folded than it is with the wings open. So um, I'd say, you know, if you were gonna put it away, put it exactly as close to where it needs to be. And then once you do get the wings folded, um, it's a lot easier to just roll it in place. All right, so closing taste statements. It takes 40 minutes-ish to fold the wings. Um, you could definitely do it a lot faster if you were prepped for it and uh, didn't have to deal with the fuel or had some other things uh, sort of lined up ahead of time prior to actually folding it. But if you have fuel in the tanks, then it's gonna add a pretty sub substantial amount of time to get it pulled apart. And I definitely wouldn't wanna do it every time I flew, but you can get it into a pretty tight space. Uh, we'll put the measurements up of what they are. We'll talk about folding the wings back uh, into their normal position in another video. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. And we'll see you in the next one.